Uh, and when we've done that, we can hit exit. Save configuration changes and exit now, yes. Uh, and now it should reboot, and um, um, if the ISO image is still in there, we'll, uh, uh, we'll get back to that first installation screen. I'm going to select English, of course. And then what we need to do is rescue a broken system. Uh, and so I'm going to select that, uh, and it's going to uh, spin by a bunch of stuff and install some some stuff and, and um, uh, basically get us a repair screen going. So I'm going to press pause while it goes through that process. You'll need to answer the, some of the same questions that you answered during the initial install. You'll need to select a language, um, a location, uh, probably a keyboard. Um, so this is just the same as the first time you installed it. Uh, I'm going through this very quickly now. And you'll notice up there in the top uh, uh, top left of the screen, uh, it's in rescue mode. So let me pause again here. It's going to ask for the host name again. Uh, let's see, server 804. Basically, it's asking the same questions that um, it asked the first time. Uh, and this goes reasonably quickly. Now eventually you're going to come to this screen, enter rescue mode, and you're going to want to select the default um, uh, default choice here, which is uh, the root file system selecting um, uh, slash dev slash sda1. Uh, so we'll, um, we'll press enter to select that. And we're going to want to execute a shell uh, in that, um, in that um, file system. And we'll go ahead and press Enter. Basically, just take the defaults here. And now, if you look down at the very bottom here, you'll see that I've got this little pound sign right down in there. Uh, and that's where we're going to be entering some commands. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter um, aptitude install Linux-386. So what this is going to do is this is going to install basically the desktop, an older version of the desktop Linux kernel that, that doesn't try to um, make use of that uh, uh, memory feature that uh, these older chips don't support. Uh, so simply press enter and it's going to uh, read some stuff. Um, you do need to be connected to the internet. It's just going to pull this down um, uh, from the internet. Uh, it takes a while to download. Uh, it's going to say, do you want to continue? You're going to say yes. And it'll start downloading. Uh, it's going to take a while. Once it downloads, it should start uh, the install automatically. So let me pause the recording again while it goes through this. And we're back. Now, how long that takes uh, is going to really depend on your internet connection, the kind of um, um, speed that you can download. Uh, on, on this machine with the internet connection I had, it took about a half an hour, but yours could be um, uh, longer or shorter just depending on the circumstances. So be patient and give it some time. Uh, in any case, uh, once it completes and you're returned back to that hash mark prompt down there on the bottom, uh, go ahead and type exit. Now at this point, I haven't found a good way to get out of this gracefully. So what I'm going to suggest you do is stop the virtual machine, um, shut down the guest. Uh, and that brings you back to a point where you can edit the virtual machine settings. Uh, you want to um, uh, set the um, uh, CD-ROM back to uh, uh, using uh, the physical drive so it doesn't boot that image. Uh, and click OK. And then start the virtual machine. Now I'm getting this message because I don't actually have a, um, um, a CD, a physical CD-ROM drive on this computer. Um, you won't get this message if you have a physical CD-ROM drive. So uh, I'm going to click Yes. Um, and it's going to tell me that it's going to start disconnected. Um, and again, that's just because I don't have a CD-ROM drive on this computer. But now let's see what happens when we do the reboot uh, for a server. You'll notice down here that it's saying that um, uh, the uh, previous um, um, boot didn't unmount cleanly, and that's true because we just shut down that virtual machine. Um, so the first couple of times you reboot, it's probably going to run this uh, file system check utility. 
uh, and that's perfectly normal. Um, it may actually um, uh, try to correct some errors as it's doing here and restart the system. And here it's starting the boot process again after running the file system check utility. And now we're going through with a, a standard clean boot. And it's asking for the login, so we can log in with our username and password. And Linux Server is now up and running. Uh, so that concludes this uh, portion of the demonstration. Um, there will be some other videos that will run through some configuration utilities, but you now have a, um, a working installation of um, uh, Ubuntu 804 server uh, in a virtual machine and uh, we've installed it with uh, the Linux, Apache, MySQL and PHP options and the secure shell, um, uh, secure shell utility. So thanks for watching.